Hello and welcome to the video you've all been uh, waiting for, well quite a few of you. I'm going to go over my crystal ball, my predictions, my pickums, if you will. So stay tuned for that. Down in the description you'll see a link to my Twitter, a link to the Discord, and YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there. Discord, join us. We BS about a league most of the day. Um, you know, if league is on, we're talking about it. And during the dead period, sometimes things get a little out of the box, but we're usually pretty tame um, down in the description you also see YouTube memberships three dollars supports me ten dollars supports me and you get extra content that includes predictions for who I think is gonna win individual games for instance later today I'm filming this yesterday later today you're going to see a video if you are a member after the roundup goes up where I will predict who I think is gonna win the games for um, day one of play-ins and that's where I do my predictions my roundup I give everybody but the who I think is going to win and lose outright I do in my predictions in my uh, extra content um, and at that ten dollar tier you also get NFL and fantasy football content a couple videos a week um, is the goal no promises but so far so good um, now for this we got the crystal ball we have the things that are relevant up here I had filled it out once but it didn't save it on there so I guess I'm truly winging it now after seeing other people's ideas, which I really don't like. I had it had it the way I wanted to, and now I feel like my mind's been plagued by other people's opinions, and I don't really like that. I like to keep myself authentic, but what are you going to do? Um, predictions, we're going to do the play-ins, how I think who's going to make it out, groups, and then rank the teams one through eight, and then predict the winner um, that way because it's random draw. So how do you predict what the quarterfinal semifinals are going to be, right? I'll be able to say what the one seeds are and guarantee that they won't play in quarters, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. So, um, most picked champion at worlds, I think it's tough. It's tough. Um, some people brought up NAR. I think that was a solid pick. I think that's a very safe pick. We could see a lot of, um, the Hecarim, it's been buffed. A lot of people like it. Maokai, some people think. Renekton, I've seen. Lulu, I've seen. Um, I think I might have had Renekton in mine originally. Um, most picked. Caitlyn, uh, I don't think she'll be picked a lot. Probably because she'll be banned quite a bit. Um, MF. Is MF good enough where she doesn't get banned, but she gets picked a lot? I mean, you gotta go, well, actually, okay, I didn't even mention her, Poppy, Poppy's gonna be the one, I don't think, Poppy's been high prio, she's been picked a lot, and I don't think, she hasn't received a nerf that I know of, so why would she stop being picked, Poppy is the pick, most banned, um, definitely Yumi, I don't care, it's definitely Yumi. I'm on hopium with that one. I'm on hopium. Because if Yumi get Yumi should be banned, it, it's still very potent. Lulu got nerfed a bit. We're not seeing a lot of Zeri Sivir in um in scrims, which may drop Yumi, thank the Lord, into a place where maybe she doesn't get picked a lot. But this is just hopium that she doesn't get picked at all, right? Let's just go with Yumi. Um that is the champion that breaks the mold. Um win rate. Now you look at this two ways. What champion will get picked five times? A lot of people are picking Singed. I'm sorry, I don't think Lahens gets to pick it five times. Um, what will get picked enough, but not enough where players lose with it? I did see the Fiora. The LPL Fiora is a thing. We're not going to see a lot of Western teams pick it, right? Um, that's that's a valid, valid pick. Um, I think the Silas has value because when it gets picked, it's usually picked by pretty good players. Um... When we see Caitlyn, is she going to be so dominant that she wins? And will she be picked five times? That's something to think about, right? Like, this champion is going to be banned a ton because it's going to be OP. Is it going to win a few a good amount of times? Is it going to have an 80% win rate because it's picked 10 times and banned the rest? Kind of get my feeling on that, you know, how I'm thinking about it. Um, or I had Silas originally, and I'm still leaning towards that way. Um, but I feel like a lot of teams are going to leave it up, which is going to cause play-in teams to play it. No offense, play-in teams, but we, you know what I'm talking about. You know I'm talking to you. 
We're going to go with Caitlyn. I think she gets played enough. Just enough to be banned. Yasuo. Um, Gragas was a good suggestion. I didn't have Gragas originally. I don't remember what I had. Maybe I had Sejuani. Three roll. You got to pick a champion that can play support, jungle, and lane. And Gragas can play four rolls. Will it be played in four rolls? Probably not. But I do think there is a chance where you could see Gragas jungle, Gragas support, Gragas top lane. I think three is possible, but four in mid lane is improbable. So what can be played in four rolls? Poppy can be played in three roles. We could see Poppy top, jungle, and support. Um, we could see um, Lee Sin in three roles. I could see Lee Sin top being a, a pick for somebody. Um, and it could be picked in support because Caria is just Caria. Um, what can be flexed? Renekton can be flexed, but not to bot lane. Tristana could be picked in three roles. Yasuo could be picked in four roles. Uh, it's between Gragas and Yasuo. I'm going to go with Gragas. Gragas. Total deaths. Renekton. It's going to be Renekton. It's going to be picked a lot, and it seems that everybody that's been picking Renekton has died a lot. Win or loss across playoffs. So we're going to go with Renekton. I think it's going to be defaulted with Nar, and um, teams are going to, a lot of players are going to die with Renekton. So Renekton is there. Now, highest KDA. I was going to do Showmaker, but I'm doing Knight. Knight, highest KDA. One of the best KDAs in LPL history this past split. Somebody had mentioned it in the Discord, and I looked back in time, and I think I had to go back all the way to 2015 to find another time where an LPL player had a 10 KDA or better. Um, so Knight... Highest KDA. I think Group C is going to give him an opportunity to succeed and not die a lot. And then, um, well, after that, it's going to be anybody's game. But at least in the beginning, he'll have some success. So, in that, there. Now, deepest champion pool. Who is going to get out? Well, um, I think Caria could get out. I think Lehens could get out. Um, BA could get out. Katie could get out. Kanavi could get out. Who has some crazy deep champion pools? Um, I'm going to go with Caria because he's my boy. Caria is disgusting at the game and I love it. Um, high uh, chance of a pentakill. Um... Well, you pick Jackie Love or Gala, right? So we're going to go with Gala because maybe he gets one during play-ins. Who gets the most first bloods? Who? Well, the Vietnamese teams are going to play fast, but they're not going to play fast enough, long enough, right? They're going to be out. So who gets the most first bloods? Well, if you take Saigon Buffalo into account, maybe they get out and they get play-in games, right? Um, is it just going to be an RNG player? It's going to be an EG player. Well, RNG could probably get out of Group D for sure, so it would be an RNG player. But you also get the extra round of games, two rounds if you're Saigon Buffalo or Mad Lions. With the assumption that um, I'm going to spoil my play-ins. If you haven't been watching my videos this whole time and realize what I'm going to do with the play-ins, you are um, not paying attention. Um, that's been spoiled already. Um, so, most first bloods. Let's go with 369. Let's go with Kanavi going top lane, getting 369 ahead.
Who's going to have the most kills in a game? We're going to go with... Um, I would have went with upset here. I'm going to go with Gala again. I think Gala goes and goes off in one of the playing games. Team champion pool. Saigon Buffalo. Screaming spoilers. If people are skipping their predictions, they're missing it. That's like screaming spoiler by putting that down. How many reverse sweeps are we going to see? I think we see one. One to keep with it. We've seen a lot of reverse sweeps. So we're going to see one reverse sweep. We're going to see two pentakills. One during play-ins. One during main. If Zeri was still meta, I would have said three or more which was an option but I'm gonna go two longest game we're gonna go with 50 to 55 minutes and it'll be probably a game that I wish didn't go that long right where it's gonna be a play-in game that's gonna be like I'm sorry Isaris but if it's you versus Istanbul Wildcats everybody's gonna be so pissed but I could see it happening Baron steals I think there's gonna be more than three there's gonna be a ton There's going to be a ton. And honestly, with Drake's, that question is an absolute silly question. So I'm going to answer with an answer that isn't even eligible. Because it's a ridiculous question. So we're going to go with Elder. It's a ridiculous question. That's not even like... At least with those, you have to take some thought. That one is just like you threw it in there to be, be a... You know, be a comedian. So, um, now the important part is predictions. Predictions, predictions, predictions. Okay, so, um, play-ins. Top four teams. EG, number one. Fnatic, number two. I still think Fnatic get there. I think Bean and Rux can get it done. The thing is, they have a good enough team to beat Chief and DFM. It's not going to be easy. Certainly not going to be easy, but Fnatic, two seed. And then I'm going to take DFM and Chief. This is unfair to Beyond Gaming. Watch Beyond Gaming finish second in the group and, and go on to groups. And that would be lovely for them. I would be thrilled for them that they did it, right? Because I didn't expect it. That would be fun. That would be a fun storyline. But let's be real here for right now. I really am not big on Beyond Gaming. Sorry to loud. I'm sorry. But you, if you're, if you have both feet on the ground... You're like, I know, it's okay. I know you're sorry, but I understand. Plans for Group B. RNG, first seed. Second seed, definitely DRX. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. DRX, definitely second place. Deft, I think that it's gonna be a deft difference. I think it's gonna be a Zeka difference. Um, DRX are pretty solid there. And then um, third, I'm gonna have Saigon Buffalo. And um, then I'm gonna have uh, Mad Lions. Sorry to Istanbul. Sorry to Isris. So, I have Saigon Buffalo. Spoiler, if you haven't been paying attention, I have Saigon over Mad. And then, who's going to make it from Saigon versus Fnatic and DRX versus DFM? Well, um, DRX definitely are going to win. Um, and then, I'm going to take Saigon Buffalo and the other one.
So I have Saigon Buffalo taking out both European teams. It's so fun. It's funny. Um, and if it happens, I hope that all the NA haters that have come through my comment section show up and um, make their presence known for their LEC teams that once again didn't get out of plans. Um, but they usually talk and then when things go poorly, they disappear into their little cave where, I mean, I don't know what to say. They must like, I don't know, drink themselves to sleep or something. So DRX and Saigon Buffalo get out. So what does that mean? EG, RNG do, EG goes to group B, RNG goes to group D. Um, Saigon Buffalo go to group A and um, DRX go to group C. So group A would be EDG, T1, C9, and um, Saigon Buffalo. And I'm going to have fun with this. And Hopium, we're going to go with T1. T1's a one seed. If the, if the meta shifts, T1 for sure. I think Zayas is just cracked. If the meta can shift, um, owner will be better off. If Caria can get on engaged champions. I mean, it is Hopium, but these are my predictions. So I can do whatever I want with them. We're going with T1 and... Um, Hopium some more. We're going to go C9 because um, C9 gets out when Jensen's on the team. C9 get out. Um, history tells me they'll get out. This has happened before. People say, oh, well, it's not the same. Well, can't deny that it can't happen. It's already happened once before. It could happen again. History tends to repeat itself. So, C9 get out. EDG. Um, EDG don't. EDG don't. Um, group B. So group B, we have, um, we have Dom Juan, we have JDG, we have G2, and we have, um, EG. The Hopium does not stick with EG on this one. S sorry, but it's just not going to happen. First seed's going to be Dom Juan. First seed's going to be Dom Juan. And then, um, it's a true coin flip between JDG and G2 for me. And people are going to say, oh, well, JDG's done this, and JDG's done that, and G2's done this, and G2's done that. And it's like, I just... Best of ones are G2, like, I think G2's going to be pretty okay. But JDG are going to be scary. You know, if you pick, if I pick JDG, like they, I'm, like I said, my rankings, they're going to be, um, be hard to not have them in the finals or I don't have finals here, but probably in the upper few spots, right? Um, where if you have G2 in there, things are a lot different and complete this pick here changes the entire in entire thing it's like yeah i'm having fun with it but at the same time like this one is is significant like this changes everything edg get out in group a i don't think edg are comp are, are at the level of gen g or top but jdg are but jdg's Gives up games to teams that stink. That happens. And G2 somehow figures it out. Do G2 figure it out, even though Flack is going to hold them back? And with EG in that group, it's like it's not a slouch in the fourth spot. I mean, EG did take a game off of T1 in Rumble Stage, and G2 lost to what? Saigon, Buffalo, or PSG in Rumble Stage. So they can lose to bad teams. EG can beat good teams. We're going with G2. I don't care. I'm not going to... I was going to go safe, but I don't care. G2. There's no money on the line. Um, so... 
That's how it is. Uh, group C is going to be top. It's going to be top, and it's going to be... Um, I could have a lot of fun with it and do GAM esports. I really could. I do think GAM are better than... Um, I think they could be better than DRX. I really do. Outside of Deft. I think that the, the champion pool things could be a problem for Zeka. I really do, I think, versus KD. Um, and then you think to yourself, well, excuse me, Rogue are just really good. Are, or is Comp and Trimby going to keep it going after playoffs? Comp's been going for a while. So is it going to be Rogue or is it going to be Gami Sports? We're going to go pretty standard. The first two, I was, you know, we're going to go standard. We're going to go rogue. But it isn't to say I didn't give Gamma a shot. I did. I gave them some thought there. And then uh, Group D is definitely the easiest one. The easiest one. This is without a doubt. Gen G and RNG. And don't forget, a couple days ago I said, I see a world where RNG get first in this group. I do still believe that. I believe the addition of having scrims and all that and getting over here sooner is going to give them an advantage to get you know used to being in North America, jet lag and all that. And also more game time than Gen G on a patch that um, Gen G hasn't played scrims on like competitively against non, you know what I'm saying, like. They've been scrimming T1 and the other teams probably in a, in a square or whatever this whole time, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so how do I rank these teams? Eighth through these eight teams. So um, Rogue or eighth? Um, Rogue or eighth? C9 or 7th? G2 or 6th? DK or 5th? So we're going to do those four right now. Those four are the bottom four. So um, what do we think about this? Well, there's three two seeds, one one seed. So so T1, what would be fun to look at? Well, we could see a T1 versus RNG rematch. That'd be fun, right? That'd be fun. Um, top versus G2 might be fun. And then... Um, I don't know, Dom Juan versus Rogue and Gen G versus C9, but T1 versus RNG would be fun, and so would Top versus G2. Right, those are the fun ones. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now. And then we have the four other teams left. So we have T1, Gen G, RNG, and Top. If the meta shifts, I have T1 probably as the number one team. But if the meta doesn't shift, I don't have them there. Okay, T1 or fourth. T1 or fourth, I think that if the meta shifts, T1 have a chance, but if not, RNG are better in the bot lane, and if the bot lane still continues to be a thing, it's going to be a problem, and even then, Breathe is willing to match Zayus and Top lane with some fun picks. Um, Wei and Owner can match each other, Faker and Jahu can match each other. It'll be a really close um, series, that T1 versus RNG rematch would be great to watch. Um, 
I have RNG though below top. Um, between top and Gen G, I think it is going to be top and then Gen G. I think if you have a situation where um, JDG do get out, for instance, they end up not inting their faces off, they would probably end up here. I'd have them, I'd have them um, fourth. I'd have them fourth. And DG2 would be out. And that, um, people might say, well, what about EDG? Where would EDG be? EDG probably be here. Right? Now, hypothetically, I think EDG step below T1, but um, above down one. So that's it for my predictions of my crystal ball. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Uh, become a YouTube member. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord later today. Like I said, I'm going to put out my roundup, so stay tuned for that. So if you hit the notification bell, if you become a subscriber, if you join any of those things I just mentioned, you will get notified when I put a video up because I put it in the new uploads channel and I put it on my Twitter. So thank you for watching once again, and I hope you come back for more content.